cartoons hooray welcome i'm nick that's joe we got george here and brennan tilly is joining us from the calgary underground film festival hi brennan hello brennan you are knee deep in the middle of your festival which we've been playing with the found footage festival for i don't know 13 years something like that we've been there forever and also we've had uh, films in there too it's it's one of our favorite film festivals of all time it's so good yeah it's always great having you guys up and yeah i think we've played just about everything you guys have done <laughs> I know, I know. well we we've been looking to uh, we should ex- we should make like huh? we should make like a really shitty movie just like as a joke and see if they'll accept it should we yeah let's do and just, that and we'll just promote that we've got world premiere and we'll just go crazy <laughs> over it okay good plan joe don't tell brennan we'll, we'll submit it just next a year. real pile of shit uh, just <laughs> let's do it well this is the the show where we watch um forgotten uh often bad um occasionally good cartoons uh from our childhoods and uh, we thought this would be a good excuse because you're in the middle of this festival we're playing we have played it already by the time this airs uh with our found footage show but uh we thought it'd be a good chance to do a spotlight on canadian cartoons and i asked brennan what are some of the the big ones and you suggested the raccoons yes it is, that's the iconic Canadian show. I, I would say that they like really played in Canada. There's actually a lot of really great uh, Canadian cartoons that I don't think are realized that they are Canadian because we kind of like make them, Mel Valna made a bunch and exported them. But that's the one that if you ask a Canadian kid from the 80s or 90s, they'll say raccoons. That's the way to go. Yeah. I've it, never even heard of it. George, have you heard of it? Never heard of it. I watched yeah. it growing up actually because it was on the Disney Channel uh, in the US. And when we got the free preview, for the Disney Channel, whatever that month was, I would see the raccoons and thought, "Oh, this is weird. The animation looks different than I'm used to." And uh, but and then we, we were talking about this. Uh, we also talked about other Canadian animation. So um, there's another thing I'm going to show starting off. But first, let's talk about the most important thing: cereals. Joe, hmm. what do you have? I've have a vintage cereal today. I got some corn pops from Batman Forever. This is from uh, I think what year was this? Early '90s. 95 95 and uh uh george actually got this for me as a gift and uh i will eat any cereal with chris o'donnell on the cover of it so that's, that's what i'm rule. having and, uh, and you know what i want to i want to start doing i want to have a collection of cereal boxes with chris o'donnell on the cover it's good yeah i, I have well, one so make far some room <laughs> <laughs> Because my cereal so, also happens to have Chris O'Donnell on the cover. No, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> you guys, you guys know what to get me for my birthday. I do. From now yep. on. Yep. I got a Canadian cereal. This is a Nesquik, only available in Canada, and you can tell because it's in French. Uh, it also has the French grains entier premier, uh, which means whole grains first. That's just what I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. And uh, <laughs> it. It looks like Cocoa Pops. It looks exactly like Cocoa Pops. And I'm guessing it turns the milk into Nesquik. I don't know. Um, Nick, is, what's the riboflavin level at? Like, is there, do they have riboflavin up there? Good question. It's in French. Um, and how do you say riboflavin in French? Ooh, I can find both of those answers. Uh, okay. Le riboflavin. You know what? I'm not seeing, it, it lists riboflavin as a, as a vitamin, but it doesn't say how much it is. Okay. So, and I don't know what it is in French. So yeah, sorry. I'm (laughs) really bad at both. I think I need my reading glasses for that one. Well, you're playing with fire because you don't know how much riboflavins. I know. I hope I don't OD today. Uh, George, what do you have? Uh, well, I wanted to get a Canadian cereal as well. I, I looked, I saw this, you're familiar with this, right? O's, Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out the Canadian version is A's, but, uh, (laughs) but there's also another one, which is, Trudeau's and uh, it, it mm. tastes dynastic. That's all I can say. It's pretty good. 
I'm glad Rob Ford doesn't have his own cereal. I, I shudder to think with that. Not anymore. Um, <laughs> all right, rough. Brennan, do you have some good Canadian cereal for us? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, uh, Tim Hortons Cafe Mocha. That's you know, the most Canadian thing I could come up with. But to really make it a, an unpalatable combination, I also added in some Captain Crunch blueberry pancakes. Uh, which is quite a, a, oh, a combination man. so it really is you got my i got my coffee and my pancakes so it's really uh a saturday morning breakfast in uh cereal form that is part of a complete breakfast it definitely is, I am it is stunned by blueberry breakfast. pancake <laughs> crunch i gotta try that cereal hey that Brennan, mix is terrifying yeah <laughs> Brennan, uh, Brennan, i remember like when, when cuff was happening it was, you, you guys would do a Saturday morning cartoon thing, right? And you would bring yeah. in cartoons. And I remember you guys would get really sugary cereals for it. For people in the audience, they could pour themselves a bowl and then go watch these cartoons. It was a great idea. But I remember, or maybe I dreamt this, that you guys had to run to the United States in order to get the really sugary stuff because it was it was like black market. Because you guys, it, it's outlawed there in Canada. Is that true? I mean, I don't know if it's out loud, but we definitely do go across the border. So, uh, yeah, about a month before, I take two vans down with the with the in-laws and the family, and we just spend two days in Montana hitting all of the the favorite <laughs> spots. Uh, so, in in 2019, I don't have the breakdown of, of every country we had there, but in 2019, we had 115 varieties of cereal for a total of. Uh, what is it in count? 330 pounds of cereal we had for our Saturday morning cartoon party. Wow. No way. So your car yeah. was like a low rider, right? It did, did the customs, like, did they check it out and say, like, what is this? And they like, open up the, the boxes and everything. They had to have thought it was drugs. They, they questioned it a lot. And they also <laughs> really um, asked me about my priorities because I had it stocked on top of my baby. Uh, you know, we got the car seat. I mean, that's prime real estate, right? So uh, they asked you me how you put the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, we're like, yeah, we're like, no, just and, and there's a bunch of back there. And then if you look behind uh, uh, that bag, you'll see why we have a third passport here. Yeah, that's that's the baby. <laughs> <laughs> what is your, what is your, what's the grossest cereal that you've uh, found in your years of doing that program? Oh, I, uh, I don't know. The, the, the maple, the, the maple bacon one actually ended up being pretty bad the year that we had that. That was actually, I won't believe um, it. Pretty. <laughs> pretty gross um it is because it was just like it was a fake imitation of it and i think it was just kind of weird and also it was it was vegan which was an interesting so and because there actually aren't that many vegan cereals um and that was one of the few vegan ones and it was bacon flavored which was an odd an odd choice so someone's like oh what can i get in the in the vegan variety he's like well we've got are uh, like crisp X or something, and also uh, bacon. We try, we thought of the vegan bacon option. <laughs> I well, the, the vegan fun fact I always throw out is that bacon bako bits are vegan, so you could eat bacon bits and just be fine. It, and it has that imitation flavor. Yeah, you know, I noticed too because I'm vegan that the uh, anything with marshmallows I you can't do because they have gelatin in them. So it's always you. Know, but chocolate cereals are are usually fine. It's just anything marshmallow is usually you contraband. So. Uh, I what anything fun on the, on the docket for this year's? Uh, I guess it's not an in person event, so you just have your your blueberry pancake and Timbits. Yeah, and so uh, I've been posting some recommendations on some of the things I've I've found around town. There's also the Captain Crunch Cotton Candy, which I picked up last year. So I don't know if that's available currently, but that's one that I'll probably be eating that day. Uh, don't do you guys have Dunkaroos down there? I know that was that yes, kind of started out just, as a Canadian snack, and then yeah, we yeah. we did in the '90s, and then I recently uh, ate the cereal here too. Yeah, that's a, so that's that, a the cereal one. just came back. Yeah, and so right, that will be one I'll probably be having. I want to know how those uh, the Cap and Crunches are the uh, the blueberry pancake. I want to know if there's if there is an actual pancake flavor to it. Uh, it let me see if I can get some that doesn't have any coffee in it because, as I said, <laughs> poor choice. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's a tasty treat. Yeah, it's not like generic. Brand. It does. It doesn't taste like tricks. You know, with it with a different color. It actually has a unique flavor. It it does. And I, that's what I really like about the Captain Crunch is you you get what you get. You know, they had the creamsicle one a few years ago. There really was a creamsicle. Oh. And yeah, there's a few. I, different I tried flavors the cotton had. candy and it was pretty darn good. I mean, it was it did yeah. taste like cotton candy um, in cereal form. So, Brendan, I feel like you need like a podcast. You seem very knowledgeable and. Uh, you seem like you know what you're doing here. You have a sophisticated palate 
and you're not afraid to try new things. Yeah, I mean, if, if there's one thing that, that's great on a podcast is crunching cereal into a microphone. That is going <laughs> to... I've made that, that mistake really many times on this oh, video cast. I don't so. actually eat it anymore because I, I edit these things. I just hear... <laughs> it like, sounds like gravel. I uh, I heard that in my ear. I was like, I'm going to make a choice just so I can taste on here. I was like, yeah, this is... I'm two bites in it. I'm regretting that I took I took that much of a spoonful. But you got to yeah. get it real soggy. Real yeah. soggy and then you're fine. Well, yeah. nor- normally we start off after the serial chat with the cartoon uh, or with a, a commercial. But this time I thought there were so many great links you sent me to Canadian animation that I thought I'd start off with one that just couldn't be more Canadian. It's a, a Peter Puck, which uh, apparently NHL hockey, when it was airing on NBC in the 70s, they decided that the intermission should have instructional you know, about what hockey rules are for newcomers who are watching it. And, you know, maybe not, they didn't know the game that well yet. So they enlisted Hanna-Barbera to make a talking uh, hockey puck named Peter Puck so that people wouldn't, wouldn't change the channel during hockey intermissions and could learn more about the sport. Um, did you, you remember watching these at all? I guess they were a little before your time, Brennan. Uh, so they, they originally would have been before my time. I think I actually have this on DVD. Um, so I, I have seen them them all, and uh, I actually really thought of it as a, a Canadian thing. And I think it started because it played Hockey Night in Canada here, but yeah. it really came into play more that it was like the Americans that had it on NBC because they didn't know the role. Like, I mean, I don't know who was watching Hockey Night in Canada. I mean, it's, it's, it's a religious experience every Saturday night watching back-to-back like Canadians and Maple Leafs games. So I'm not sure who didn't know what icing was. Was watching again. <laughs> I was just yeah. going to say, I, I got to watch these because I still don't know what icing and offsides they explain is. It's been it. explained to me. Okay, yes, good. They, they explained it in here. I just cut a short version from, I think, the, the first one of these um, interstitials. Hockey Night in Canada presents me, Peter Puck, your irrepressible imp of the ice and exciting NHL hockey. George, I think, I think about you as like an irrepressible imp of the show. And I, I also don't have uh, elbows or knees. <laughs> yeah, you're our Peter Puck. <laughs> yeah. Peter Puck here again. This time I'm going to tell you about playing the game. NHL hockey, that is, the world's fastest team sport. What makes it the fastest team sport? Well, for one thing, players speed along at up to 25 or 30 miles an hour. And they, whoop, that me about it speeds over 100 miles per hour. We really move once the game starts. Ah! But you say you have seen the game stop. Well, of course you have. But the only time it will stop is because of a penalty or if someone is called offside. Or if someone does what we called icing the puck. First, let's take a look at the rink. The game starts right here at the center face-off circle, like this. The referee drops little old me onto the ice it's between cruel. the two opposing centers. It's living. Uh, hi, guys. Now, easy does it, fellas. This is only a demonstration, you know. Oops. Wow. And the game is on. Oops. Hey, ow. Ouch. Oh, why didn't I listen to my mother and become a bicycle tire? Oops. Ouch. Or an eraser. Good joke. Oops. Sounds a little like Casey Kasem sometimes. I don't think it is him, but it, it's, there's parts of it where it sounds a little bit like his shaggy voice does peter puck does he address fighting or do they pretend that fighting doesn't happen not in the ones i watched it was all about rules and things like that uh, and you Brennan, saw the you the, know? Uh, the hockey player was embarrassed when he was caught uh earlier i don't know if you saw his face turned red oh he blushed i don't know if yeah. that's accurate i don't probably not no okay oh why didn't i listen to my mother and become a bicycle tire oh out or an eraser hold it Whoa. Woo! Keep your eye on me. I'm pretty fast. There it is, Peter Puck, 1973. I wonder if there are Peter Puck t-shirts. If not, there should be. It's a good mascot. It has that Hanna Barbera sort of, you know, animation animation look to it. So it's a, a notch above, you know, I think typical animation. It's pretty good. There yeah, are Peter Puck one. t-shirts. By there the way. are. Yeah. Okay, Brendan, do you know if they addressed fighting in the Peter Puck? Or is that just you're not supposed to acknowledge that fights happen in hockey? It's just sort of. I, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've watched through them all. But uh, I watched a, a couple again as I was going through what to recommend for you. But I didn't get through the whole list. So I don't I don't remember seeing fighting. Well, let's talk about the raccoons. The raccoons <laughs> is uh, 
it, it's a it's a funny history to this one. Uh, so let me uh, pull up a picture first of um, what the raccoons look like. This was a 1980 was when they were first conceived, and uh, the raccoons were um, I guess they were they were the brainchild mainly of a guy named Kevin Gillis, who was a songwriter, a, a TV host himself, but also an animator. And they kind of have a cool look to them. Uh, there's Bert the raccoon is sort of the main piece, sort of like the Elvin of Elvin and the Chipmunks, down to even the, the sweater. You know who but, he kind of reminds me of is is Getty Lee from Rush. Does he kind of look like Getty <laughs> Lee a little bit? Yeah. I wonder if they did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> or just do most Canadians look like Getty Lee? I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah, it's about these this this. Raccoon fam, the family's kind of odd, and you can see the main villain is the guy named Cyril Sneer. He's a pink uh, aardvark, and he's sort of the Mr. Burns. He's a greedy developer who wants to bulldoze the forest all the time. And the raccoons, Bert and uh, the, the other two are a married couple who he lives with, which is kind of, uh, maybe they're part of a thruple, maybe they're kind of, uh, it's very progressive. Like, like polygamous kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, probably. Like, okay, yeah. all right. That's what I'm Do they address it. that? Do they address that at all? Yeah, in the it's, in the, it's in the pilot. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> very progressive Canadian. You know, Canada's a little bit more progressive in general. Mm -hmm. um, so Ralph and Melissa are the married couple. They're, Ralph and Melissa are raccoons. So why do they have the same last name as, as Bert? That's never addressed either. Um, Cyril Sneer, he has a son whose name is uh, Cedric, who actually is more allied with the raccoons. A little bit more of a sensitive nerd. His girlfriend is named Sophia, and uh, and there's a an aardvark, or yeah, the aardvark family. There's a a dog, and in the first uh, few specials, there's also a forest ranger and his children that are unaware of what's happening, like right under their noses, the raccoons. So you'll see them, and predictably, I'm going to show a special from I think 1984 called um, uh, what is it called? Is it Raccoons on Ice? Raccoons on Ice, which was also yeah. made into an album because it stars guest voices Rita Coolidge, who is a, she did Your Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher and Higher, and she did the theme to Octopussy. And then Leo Sayer, who did You Make Me Feel Like Dancing, were guest voices in it. It's a musical. It involves hockey. I think that's all you need to know. Um, well, what would you say it's, is it like, the the smurfs but with raccoons like what how would you uh, compare it like put it into terms that we would understand brennan what do you think it's it's um it's it's sort of a gentler 80s cartoon um the animation is a lot environmental better. message to it um yes. and actually the, the animation i think even gets a fair bit better than than what we're going to see it was it was a little cruder in the specials and then by the time it made the series it had cleaned up a little bit yeah it's a i think a pretty solid animation really uh you know decent production values and yeah similar to a smurfs but definitely a lot of uh, uh like anti-corporate greed message to the point where they kind of had to change it once they got to season four or five they're like how many times can this aardvark try to fold those the forests <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was pretty long running and, and it, like i said it aired in the disney channel and on cbc it, it aired from 85 to 92 um and uh, there was a christmas special and then yeah so Fairly popular ca cartoon, but only 13 episodes per season. So it wasn't like the Smurfs where they just, you know, had to churn out hundreds of these. They, but seven I, episodes, seven seasons, that's pretty good. Yeah, it was that's, pretty good for a cartoon. Yeah. So uh, let's watch. A little bit of that 70s sound still in the music. Oh, I like it. Look, as told by Rich Little. What? Yes. He's the narrator? Yep. This is part of that Earth message, too. It starts with the, the globe. Somewhere a long ways off and just beyond the horizon lies the evergreen forest. I used to hearing Rich Little's real voice, you know? No, it, it sounds like he's going to break into a John Wayne impression at yeah. any moment. Or yeah, it like sounds a, like he doesn't know his own voice. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, <laughs> who am I? He, he kind of sounds like he's doing like, hello, I'm a little chickadee. You know, but I guess but maybe that's what he really talked like. I bet he has really? existential crises constantly. Rich Little, yeah, still yeah. to this day. He talks to Walker. Yeah, we should. <laughs> 
By the way, I found out Frank Welker uh, has a Christmas album. So this needs to be further explored. Brennan, we talk about Frank Welker every week because he's, you know, the cartoon voiceover guy. I assume that, that, that's well, how far I make it in every episode. Yeah. So oh. where, I was saying, no, I, I don't actually finish the many episodes. I don't know all I do, but I, I often get the Frank Welker reference about half an episode. So yeah, I'm so you, well versed in the Frank Frank Welker aspect. You're usually of, like of clicking this. off right now. Like you're 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 <laughs> stopping right about now, right? I think I get about yeah probably five minutes into the actual cartoon, and then and again it's just it's been you know it's programming season, so I keep meaning to go back, and I'm sure that my other computer <laughs> ah, nah, you're not has missing about anything. four episodes open, but yeah today I was thinking oh man, if, if there's inside jokes past Frank Welker, I'm going to be out of the loop. <laughs> <laughs> That's that describes most of our viewers. What yeah. what do they mean when they say Welkerinos? <laughs> my parents my parents recently told me that they they uh, watched the show, but then they fast forward through the cartoon parts. <laughs> so <laughs> interesting. I, there's some cartoons where I wish we would just do that. Yeah, just for well, the viewer. we could we could in this if you get bored. Okay. Twilight, where the mist is so thick you could almost touch it, but watch, the sun is rising and chasing away the mist and the night stars. And the evergreen forest lake is frozen solid like a giant ice cube. It is here the forest animals like best to play. Hey, paper! Even the humans love the ice. <laughs> Why, Julie and Tommy skate most every day. But the raccoons are here the most, usually playing hockey. I'm certain they can't imagine anything or anyone would ever keep them from playing. But at that very moment, there is someone plotting to stop their fun forever. Is, uh, is Rich Little Canadian? Does anybody know? I don't think he is. Maybe he is. Let, look that up, somebody, please. Sure. On it. Yeah. Hey, anybody our want some hot... Our, an- our viewers who've made it this far demand answers on that. So. <laughs> Canadian-American impressions. Okay. Oh, of go. course. Okay. Oh, yummy. Schaefer, don't you want to come in? Schaefer's in every episode. Okay, Schaefer, but don't stay out too long. (laughs) Interesting they have lyrics here. Yeah. I like the backgrounds. Do that like the shading? The shading on an icicle? They never would do that. So, but this is a special, so they put some extra money into this, right? Probably. But like Brennan was saying, the series looks pretty good in general. <laughs> Your puck, Cedric? Thanks, Schaefer. Hey, you wouldn't want to watch some of my moves, would you? How about tomorrow? The New York Rangers? Yeah. Gee, thanks. It's Islanders. It's Mike Bossy's jersey. Oh, that's oh, an Islanders, Islanders jersey. Oh yeah, that's right. Islanders, yeah. And I, so, I think it's, I think it's Mike Bossy, isn't it? Is it twenty-two? Uh, let's look. Bye. You're asking the wrong group here, by the way. <laughs> We're live in New York, but. Ooh. That's great. Oh, I didn't know I had an audience. I'm Schaefer. I'm Sophia Tutu. Do you think anybody's first crush was Sophia Tutu? Had to be, uh, right? It, me right now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never sure knew what love was until today. <laughs> those glidey things, Sophia. Swan glide. Thanks, Schaefer. Schaefer reminds me of another do- cartoon dog. Oh boy! Is the Looney Tunes one? Well, so- I was thinking for better, for worse. The cut, co- the comic oh, strip, the Sunday yeah. comic. Fria, yeah. See you soon. Bye. Which I think is Canadian. Hi, it is. Schaefer. I think. Good to yeah. see it. So you need a goalie? I'll give it a try, but I'm a little out of practice. Excuses, excuses. I'm just the too Lee? good. What a whiz! Mm-hmm. All right, Ralph, pass the puck. What's the line in the uh, pavement song about Getty Lee? Uh, what about the voice of Getty Lee? How did it get so high? I wonder if he speaks like an ordinary, ordinary guy. guy. I know him I and bet, he does. I know him and he does. <laughs> it's the best <laughs> lyric. <laughs> he just kind of talks that part, too. Uh, did I score? Man, 
missed by a fourth mile. Ha! Ah, you were lucky this time, but next time, pow! Just call me Boom Boom Bird, the greatest player. I like Bird's voice. I'm the greatest player. This is where we build our own Superdome. It'll extend over the whole lake. The fabulous Fur Forum. The Cyril Dome. <laughs> Oh. Well, uh, it'll be glorious. Neon, billboards, concrete, cement, and inside, our skating rink. We'll charge exorbitant admission. We'll be skating in the big box. Tomorrow we start construction, and nothing will stand in our way. Nothing! I'm with him. I think it sounds yeah. like a good opportunity. Yeah, I think that stadiums would be a good moneymaker. Yeah. I'd provide a lot of jobs. The next day dawned crisp and clear. The kind of day when it seems nothing can be wrong with the world. And the skating sensation said... 22. So was he yeah. a Canadian, The uh, that player that you mentioned? Yeah, Mike Mike Bossy was Canadian. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, remind me to tell my uh, Getty Lee story during the break, Joe. Okay. Edric Sneer gets the puck. And he speeds towards the goal. He swerves. He twists. He oops. I like his voice a lot. Yeah. He falls. He's kind of the Urkel of this cartoon. <laughs> oh, clumsy me. Did so, I hurt you? So they call him Meat Cute. Oh, no. No, I mean, I can't I'm pause. okay. Yep. Brennan, I have a Urkel related question for you. So we do shows in England all the time and, and we made Urkel references up there or over there and they have no idea who Urkel is. They've never even heard of Urkel. They have no clue. You guys know Urkel, right? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a huge <laughs> relief. <laughs> Your references will span at least a second country. That's all right, because okay, I have yeah. about 15 yeah. Urkel references coming up here. Keep them so. on deck. All right. Are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Did I do My that? Name's Sophia Tutu. <laughs> I'm Cedric Sneer. Well, any Cedric, cheese? <laughs> I suppose I should get back to my swan glides. Swan George, do you know who Urkel is? If I ever fall, um, he's a Canadian uh, hockey player, right? <laughs> yep, that's right. Number 22. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very calming cartoon. That's what I'm saying. It's just... And there's genuine pathos to the cartoon too, like when you get to later seasons, you deal with real issues. Sophia, can I buy you a I mean, cup of It feels like they're not even trying to sell us something. No, it's weird. Uh, I know, I'm not used to this. Figures, there are happy meal toys. They're what like what to do with my money. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda, like were concerned. there tie-ins? Like merch or anything? I don't anything? think there were. It's yeah. it's. I've tried to get a raccoon's T-shirt recently and haven't been able to. And you can't even get it on DVD. I mean, it must be big in Germany because all the DVDs are are from Germany, so it must have taken off there. But otherwise, it's not even released here. Or there's no, or very little official merch that I can seem to find. And yeah, I don't I think, remember anything from back at the time either. I think this is our first cartoon with integrity. It might be. I, yeah. I think it is. Should we just stop it now? I mean, there's... Yeah, yeah, fast forward. <laughs> fast forward. We're we'll losing people. <laughs> I'd love one. I mean, they, there's the album, I guess, for this special. It's an LP. I, I bet all proceeds that. went to something good, though. Did yeah. you see that? What Healthcare. a shot! <laughs> I'm terrific! I'm a superstar! Oh, I'm worn out by my own brilliance. <laughs> Cyril Sneer? What are you doing with all those ugly machines? Progress, sweetie. Soon there'll be a colossal concrete <laughs> complex right where you're standing. So It'll cover the whole... An aardvark has an aardvark dog, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess it's like Pluto being the, like, goofy owning Pluto. It's kind lake. of one of those... You can't right. build here. This lake doesn't belong to you. That's right. Perhaps not technically, but what real use have you for this lake? We skate and play hockey here all the time. We're fantastic. Hockey? 
You? <laughs> I don't believe it. Well, you should have seen the goal I just scored. We can whip anyone. Really? And you can't kick us off the ice. It's unfair. Unfair? Me? You probably couldn't have a cigar smoking cartoon character nowadays either, could you? Mm, probably not. I don't think smoking's allowed. Me? Yeah. Well, just to show you what it did look weird when that room full of bears was smoking. How yes. about if one week from tonight we have a hockey game here? <clears throat> Your team against mine. Winner takes the lake. Deal? You bet your bulldozers. No! no. It's you can't too late stop now. a flame when it's We're red hot. The bargain. <laughs> 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 hey, don't look at me like that. We'll save the lake. I mean, how much can Cyril Sneer know about hockey? Call up the farm team. Send me the first round draft choices. Send me the free agents. Call the lumberman and order up. Ten dozen new super sticks. Polygraphite film. Eighteen. Poor Bert. Now he too is worried. Perhaps deep down he suspected he wasn't really a hockey whiz. And suddenly Cyril Sneer seemed like a very dangerous opponent indeed. All right, that's halftime of Raccoons on Ice. Thoughts so far? I mean, I think it's pleasant. I think uh, I'm actually enjoying it. Uh, and it's weird to not have them selling shit to us this entire time. It's really, it's throwing me off. I should say they put out some VHS releases. I have two of them here. Uh, the Raccoons Cry Wolf and the Raccoons Learn a Lesson. Pretty direct, not trying to sell anything. <laughs> it's not like totally extreme raccoons and the rollerblading, you know. It's just gentle, slight lessons being learned here. And an environmental message, too. Pretty. What, pretty what channel did it air on? Was it like your PBS, Brennan, or like? It's on the CBC, the Canadian Broadcast. Incorporation, yeah. So, like, our you know, similar to the BBC, the Canadian version of the BBC would be probably the okay. closest thing, but yeah, it's a public broadcaster, yeah. Uh, so real quick, our friend was uh, our friend Tom is the world's biggest Rush fan, and um, I was working in the audience department at the Colbert Report, and Rush was coming on the show. They're going to be on two nights, they're going to perform, and then also do an interview. And um, I told my friend Tom, who's who's been on our various shows before and he booked a ticket to come out to new york and so me joe and tom um and i think one of tom's bandmates who is also a huge rush fan flew out for it all got to see them rehearse and then afterwards they were joe were you there i wasn't there for the rehearsal no okay no i went to the i went to the show that night but right so yeah. then the show they play so it, it basically it's just this small studio and it's tom and me and then the whole band rush sitting in there performing basically privately for us rehearsing for the cameras and then afterwards um i took tom to go meet the guys they were just kind of backstage and uh you know we talked to getty lee about he and his wife were going to see um avenue q i think or something on on broadway we talked about that but um neil peart wasn't there because he's Notori was notoriously private and whatever. So Tom was a little disappointed. He's a drummer. So Neil Peart is his hero. And um, so we went back to like my desk, got my backpack. And as we were coming up through the office, I guess Neil Peart was trying to sneak out that way and not go through the audience door where people were waiting. And um, so we we're just walking through it. I'm like, hey, great, you know, great job on the show tonight. And then Tom looks up and he goes, Neil. His voice raised like 10 <laughs> octaves and he just had this look of Neil. He didn't know what to say. He was completely flummoxed and you could tell Neil Peart was uncomfortable and uh, just kind of slunk out the door. He's like, oh, great. Another drummer. Wonderful. <laughs> yep. Can't wait to Why talk don't I to have him. any female fans? You know, it's just <laughs> always guys like Tom Jacobson. Uh, yeah. Well, let's uh, get to some commercials. George, what do you have for us? Well, uh, these were provided by uh, um, Brennan about half. Yeah. So uh, thank you for uh, sending most of these. And then I, they're just, um, I guess, classic Canadian commercials. And there are the little differences between uh, our country and their country. Saturday morning cartoons. We'll be right back. There's a feeling in the air. Oh, yeah. Can't get anywhere except in Calgary. Curling's fun. 
try that once. I didn't know that you guys got this commercial too, or that whatever the jingle, because we had we had that in, in in Iowa when I lived in Iowa. We had it in Wisconsin. We had it in Minnesota. Like it was everywhere. Yeah, it's a real snake oil sale. <laughs> it it was because like I guess they just had this this get of sun as it guys just going town to town. Yeah, exactly. It was like the music man. He's like, hey, I got a jingle for you. You know, I'll just put Calgary. We love uh, you. And, we we yeah. made it just for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, just, we'll just put a couple references in there. And uh, and nobody will know about it until the Internet comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it must have been this realization for people, you know, because I, I thought it was it was hello, Wisconsin. Hello, yeah. Wisconsin. And then yeah. yeah, to find out there's dozens of others. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else Canada has to offer. We interrupt this commercial message to give you this important news. Due to the unprecedented demand from consumers across Canada, Leon's is extending their incredible no money huh. miracle. Now you can buy quality furniture, appliances, and carpet today with no money down, no interest, and now no payment till December. Hurry, join the thousands and save. The miracle is almost over. Why like, do you is think that your mommy un, or daddy is are always Is that a, uh, is that oh, the way you guys pronounce it? No, I was going to say that was an unprecedented pronunciation. Of the word. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> I'm, I'm sometimes surprised at process versus you know, we say process, which I yeah. guess doesn't really make sense. But yeah, so he just said it wrong, I guess. I don't know what that, that, that guy was talking about. He was just <laughs> off his rocker. <laughs> uh, speaking of off his rocker, let's uh, do you think your mommy or daddy are always telling you don't put that in your mouth? Because if you ate somebody else's medicine, some bad food, or some poison, you could get very sick. <gasps> Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you stuff it in your face. Don't stuff it in your face. Though it might look good to eat. Though it might look good to eat. And it might look good to taste. And it might look good to taste. You could get sick. Yuck. Real quick. Yuck. Real sick. Don't you put it in your mouth, uh-uh. Till you ask someone you love. That's right, sis. If it's okay to eat, if it's okay to eat, like a muffin or a beet. Like a muffin or a beet. If you don't know just what it is, remember, boys and girls, don't put it in your mouth. Yeah. Always ask someone you love before you put anything in your mouth. Are, are they supposed to be? Are they supposed to be mothballs or something? Like what are they? Blue creatures. No, but I wonder if they're supposed to be something like mothballs. Because don't they kind of look like mothballs? And you're not supposed to eat mothballs. But didn't kids no, eat a bunch of mothballs? Mothballs don't play they're ukulele. White. Oh, yeah, they don't. I, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Our they look like mothballs aren't quite that musical. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you everything is terrible doesn't find this because they, 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 I can already see their grotesque versions of these costumes. Oh, uh, definitely. Right? Yeah. Before you put anything in your mouth. I want Steve, Mike, Mario, Tommy, come on, Mike. Guess that who's Albert? Hey, he's your kid, brother. You take him. Come on, Albert. We carry the best names in hockey. Bauer, Cooper, CCM. But we're just the beginning. How far you go depends on you. Oh, I sure wish we had a guy like Albert. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he made it. <laughs> he, did. he did it. Wait, wait. I want to talk about Canadian Tire because it always confuses me. Yeah. Uh, just because it's called Canadian Tire and they clearly sell hockey equipment and other things. But um, whenever we're there, Toby, a guy who comes to Puff <laughs> regularly, he always he always gives me Canadian Tire dollars. And are they worth anything or is it just he always has them in his wallet he's, and he's like, oh, I got some more for you and he'll give me some like I always hold coupons or something. That's what they seem like. Right. Or Yeah. Like fake Monopoly money. 
I mean, they they can use them on par with Canadian dollars, which are worth that much either. But uh, yeah, no, like you get you get ten cents at a time, and and everyone has some in their glove box. It's, uh, you can. I, mean, I think most Canadians have enough Canadian Tire money to buy a shovel at any point. Like, just if you just like, man, I need to get a shovel. Well, you know, let's check what's on the fridge and the glove box. Like, the way you guys have change in your couch. Yeah, we have, we have Canadian. We have Canadian Tire money in our chest. <laughs> So. And I do too because of Toby. So yeah. you're clay, you're vacuuming under your couch cushions. Ah, god damn it! It's Canadian Tire bucks. Oh, that's a brown one. That's fifty cents. This is great. <laughs> hey, you ever thought about taking drugs? Oh, this is Uncanny Valley puppetry. I never really thought about it. Think hard. Are they garbage pail kids? <laughs> the first hit's free, but you find me when you need more. The choice is yours. What do you think? Nah, it's just not worth the time. I'm deeply disturbed by this one. Oh, this, oh, oh, whoa. oh my god. Holy shit, go back. Go back. Look at that. That was awesome. That is so genuinely Brennan, awesome. Brennan, did you watch this as a kid? I don't remember this one, but definitely these, these concerned children advertisers was uh, a, a big kind of series of, of ads i think the don't you put it in your mouth was by them as well yes um and yeah that that was yeah they they Ooh. had a lot of these that showed up and uh i guess that's thing is that as i was trying to think back on the ads from uh my childhood uh it was a lot more psas than than toys or anything like we just kind of watch uh you know raccoons and other wildlife try to save a forest and then <laughs> learn not to take drugs and not to put stuff in our mouth like just Huh. The concept of oh, we're like constantly Joe being sold things. Is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's we had weird. PSAs that were telling us to put stuff in our mouths. <laughs> yeah, it's just different. It's a little different down here. Um, also, I wonder, I wonder if they're the same people who uh, do the designs for your cigarette packs. Don't you guys have the cigarette packs with like the brutal like lung cancer exposed? We do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Collect I've seen that. All. Yeah, <laughs> is there out there like trading doesn't, cards? Doesn't doesn't stop you from buying a pack while drunk. So it's, nope. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Every time. Children's advertisers. Now back to Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, so those are some horrifying uh, Canadian PSAs and and uh, more hockey related stuff. You ready for the conclusion of uh, the raccoons? Am I ever? It was midnight, the darkest night of the year. Now it was time for the game. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ferlin Field Digger. Tonight's game comes to you live from the Evergreen Forest, and it is indeed a crucial game as the Evergreen Raccoons meet Cyril's Bears. And don't they look like a brutish bunch? You better believe them, and there better be a doctor in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's go to center ice for the opening faceoff. I like how the... Go, get them! And now didn't really laugh. Ralph's got the puck. He's right through center ice. A tremendous check. It's passed to the far wing. The Bears street for Melissa. It's always interesting to see how they do audience members for sporting events. Like we watched the Pro Stars basketball where they just had a bunch of, I guess, circles and then a few people who were just doing the same pose, you know? Yeah. And here they just do detailed people, but only a few of them. That's got to take forever to yeah. do. Um, wait, by the way, just catch me up on this. So they're playing them. And if the Bears win, then they get, they to, get build to build the stadium. The stadium. The okay. Pond. All right. Yeah. Going right in on Schaefer. He scores. And it's the Bears one to nothing. Oh, no. Yeah. George. He could be hurt. <laughs> and Schaefer is knocked out of. He scores. And there's an injured raccoon. Your oh, no, is swelling. swelling. He can't get up. <laughs> he has. Do you think there are any like um, sexy drawings of um, what's her name? Tutu. I'm uh, making them right has now. Has George done any? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Right. <laughs> You're sitting out the rest of the game. No. Yes. All we got is one period left to save our lake. The raccoons were in desperate trouble, but maybe, just maybe. My John Wayne impression chance. would say I want to see more of that <laughs> sense of unfair play. I want to see raccoon fur fly. Cedric? Shh. go berserk. You may have noticed he's not especially nice, even normally. Big You're guy. only hope. <laughs> it's too late. 
Then it's too late for us, too. You After the game's sweet. over, our lake will be ruined, and we'll never see each other again. No! If only there was some way Pop couldn't see me on the ice. Then you do it? Yes. Oh, Cedric, it's Roger Stone we'll glasses. find a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Something's missing. Bert, give Cedric your sweater. I wonder if they had to license Thanks, the New York Bert. Ranger, New York Islander hey, logo. Hey, we should do this more often. Hey, that'll do the trick. Good luck. The second period is underway. The puck is back to... Who is that Bert. player? Huh. He should be... What oh, an incredible oh, shot. What in blazes? Run. Who is that? And the raccoons are on the scoreboard. It's that mystery player again. He's going through the entire team. He's going right in on the goal. Who do you think it's going to be? I don't know. Get that guy and get him good. Turn him into a doormat. A wicked backhand. He scores. That's a backhand. This is incredible. Unbelievable. What a comeback. What a player. Oops. Got you. Cedric. Cedric Snare? My son? My ex-son, Cedric Snare! Hi, Pop. Surprise? Surprise? I'll show you surprise after the game. The dungeon. The dungeon. Oh, no. He Bring lives in like a haunted players. castle. I want a whole new squad. Mr. Snare's keeping his paws on Cedric. He'll never get away. Without Cedric, we're finished. And I don't want Without either Cedric, of you two to get fucked. hurt like Bert. <laughs> I sure like this lake. We did put up a good fight. That counts for something. Perhaps it lawyer. is too dangerous <laughs> to face those new bears. And have the lawyer Maybe play hockey for him. Yeah. Give up. We can't quit now. I won't quit now. We can still fight. Bert. There's something kind of phallic about his nose. I I don't know. It's just a little. I guess Gonzo's nose. Any nose that's kind of like that is a little. There's a lot of phallic noses in this mm-hmm. in this cartoon. Cereal, you yeah. can't play with that paw. I can try. I can't be much worse than I usually am. We may only have two more minutes to skate on this lake, and I'm not gonna waste it. All we have to do is score one measly goal. Maybe we can't do it, but maybe we can. All of us together. Couldn't we at least try? Come on, guys. Maybe we can do it. I might get Maybe this album. Maybe we can. Yes, you can do it. Ten, Ten seconds. The goalie is after it. It's a race. Bert flips the puck. Five oh. seconds to go. Four. <gasps> three. Did you ever dream two. About scoring the goal for one. the national team with one he scores. Oh, I don't believe it. The Raccoons have won it. No. What a game. What an incredible finish! We did it! You yep. can! We did it! We did it! We really won! Yippee! Yay! <laughs> My hero! I won't have yeah, it! Yeah, do you remember when? Do you remember when Amazon was gonna put a uh, like a warehouse in your neighborhood, Long yeah. Island City? Yeah. Is this how it happened? Like you had to play on the hockey team to defeat Jeff Bezos and exactly. everybody's that. Exactly. Okay. Exactly like this. Yep. And you were the underdog because you'd never played hockey before, and you ended up winning. Yep. I was the pencil neck geek son of Jeff Bezos. That because they uh, went away. It yep, worked. Yep. yep. And we won. I demand a remix. I was Yay! We won. And then they bulldoze over it anyway. Looks yeah. like someone's <laughs> been skating up a storm. <laughs> Have you two been playing any wild hockey games? Oof. Oof. Julie, Tommy, and their dad never knew how close they came to losing the lake forever. But, but as Schaefer Ronald knew, Reagan would say, just as he knew the well, lake was buddy. now safe, <laughs> because he and five other animals had discovered that by working together <laughs> as a team, you can do almost anything. By Raccoon's action figure and any participating Tim Hortons. 
bad guys actually honored their side of the bargain, which is they did. Yeah, know. they did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, all right. What was that a sneak peek at? That looked well, pretty fun. We're getting a sneak peek <laughs> at a game I've been very excited. Well, any of closing observations about uh, the raccoons? Did that bring back memories, Brennan? Yeah, that it that was really brought back a lot from from the time I watched it a week ago. It all came flooding back <laughs> today, and I just those this, fun memories of. <laughs> this is easily the furthest you've made it into our show before, right? Into this show, Shattered in Morning Cartoons. I, I believe, see, I, I don't think I've made it this far yet. It, <laughs> right, right. Every, no, the, I, I watch it almost every week, but never this far. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> it requires you to be on the show in order to get this far. Occasionally, yeah, I, we, I wasn't sure if I was going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> that, was sort of, that was sort Brennan. of like... Uh, Where'd Brennan go? <laughs> I mean, I was so bored in church that I became an altar boy. I just have something to do. So that, I guess, is similar. Um, but speaking of church, I think uh, the thing that we've talked about on... VCR party and found footage festival is occasionally we'll find a kid's video and we won't know if it's religious or Canadian when we we're first watching it, because, you know, like if it's, if it's a cartoon or a kid's puppet thing, it's like, it's not Sesame street. You don't recognize it. So is it, is it something seems a little weird? The lighting's a little bit different. Is it Canadian or is it religious? And uh, the first time we encountered that was with creating Ram Lazar uh, we, we thought as a Canadian or religious turns out neither it was made on Long Island, but it just seemed <laughs> different to us. And Brendan, I know you're not used to taking things from the American perspective, but I thought this could be a fun change of pace because, you know, you can see uh, what we go through. I'm guessing you'll know the answer to most of these. So I'll have you guess last in this game that's called religious or Canadian, <laughs> religious or Canadian. I'm going to show you a clip from a video and you have to tell me religious or Canadian. All right. So, all right. And I'll get George and, and Joe's answers first. And maybe Brennan, you can help reveal the answer if you know it. Osborne, I like you to meet my best friend, Christopher, the lion of love. He's the leader of the kingdom chum. <laughs> well, Annie, all the kingdom chums are leaders in their own way. <laughs> Welcome. Listen, is somebody going to tell me who these kingdom chums are or what? Religious or Canadian? What do you think? Oh, wow. This is tough already. Um, the, the fact that they use the word kingdom, uh, that seems like a, a religious word. So I'm going to go religious on this one. George? I'm also going religious because his name is Christopher. Mm, interesting. Okay. Oh. And Brennan? I don't know, but I was going to say Canadian because it seems so on the nose to be religious that it probably is actually just Canadian. The whole kingdom and the Christopher thing sounds Canadian to me. Be thrown off. Okay, let's take a look. Very simply, Osborne, the kingdom chums are special animals. Animals born with the great stories witnessed by their ancestors long ago in the days of the Bible. That's right. The kingdom yes. chums are religious. <laughs> All right. Ready for number two. It seems like it's against the Bible to have like a, a lion who's like, you the know, false I don't idol, know. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It seems like one of those. All right. Let's take a look at this one. There, there. No, I'm not going to hurt you. We're just going to take a look at you. That's all. Religious or Canadian? See, I think you're doing a switcheroo here because, you know, the whole uh, the, the, being eaten by a whale, that's a big Bible thing, right? Jonah so, and the whale, yeah. Yeah, Jonah and the whale. So I'm, but I'm going to stick with, I'm going to stick with religious just because okay. it's so obvious. I, I'm Earth? going Canadian because there was a whale in a net, which strikes me as having uh, empathy. So therefore <laughs> cannot possibly be religious. <laughs> Brennan, do you know it? I don't know it. All right, let's take what a look. What would you guess? What would you guess? Well, yeah, what is your guess? I'm going to guess Canadian. All right, let's take a look. That is oh, Canadian. Wow. Uh, Smoggy's yep. another environmental cartoon. Should have followed my gut on that one. <laughs> it was a switch yeah. All yeah. right, next up. Take a close look at this one. Our last time we were talking about girls and boys. Well, today our show is about B O Y S. Uh, you know what a B 
O-Y is, right? That's a boy. Uh, they're not as nice as boots, but they're all right. Register Canadian. What the hell is going on there? I will say we watched this in school. Oh, you watched it in school? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go Canadian. I'm going to say both. (laughs) Okay, Brennan, do you know it? I don't know it, but I'm going to keep national pride going and say Canadian. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Let's take a look. You and you and you and you and you. Yep, it's the read along by Ontario Educational Arts uh, Communications Authority. Um, we, yeah, we cool. watched this in school. It was a, a reading uh, educational show with a, uh, a boot. And one of the voices from the raccoons was also a voice in this. So, <laughs> is it right. a shared universe? <laughs> yes, it all is. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Casablanca, this is cooter music if I've ever heard it. Well, I'll tell you what, sweetheart. Why don't I go down and get them? Good idea. Rich Little? So let's start tapping. Whew. It's a tough one. <laughs> it's gotta be a gift. Oh, I love this. I do too. Good song. All right. Relig- two- Religious or Canadian? What do you think? It's pure insanity, is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I'm bouncing back and forth. Uh, I'm going to go religious on it because those puppets looked really cheap and the, like religious puppets are always really cheap looking. Okay, religious. George. Uh, I'm going to say both again. <laughs> and Brennan? <laughs> I think the wooden spoons as a musical instrument makes it Canadian. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's take a look. <laughs> That's what the... Yeah, and Can West Broadcasting Sasquatch, which I guess is Saskatoon or Saskatchewan, I suppose. That's, one, That's yeah. Canadian, huh? Yeah, size small. I believe our friend Tom watched this, didn't he? Do you remember? I have no idea. Because I remember I, teasing him by saying size small. But I, yeah. I do know that uh, Neil Peart, he played the drums with two wooden spoons, didn't he? That was his like signature, <laughs> yes. right? He was always. It is. Yep. Yeah. Neil! Okay, <laughs> next up. <laughs> What's this? Well, well, you see, turtles throw fish instead of roses, but you can put it over there for a little while. I see. Roses and fish do have something in common. What? They both smell. <laughs> religious or Canadian? George? I'm going religious. Oh, oh sorry. I, I just always start. Yeah, George, you go first. Sorry. Religious. Joe? Yeah, I'm going religious, too, because uh, I'm going back to my thing about shitty puppets. Okay. Brennan? Yeah, religious. I've been going to Canadian with everyone, but that one's, that one's, we're not claiming that one. That is Greeks and Christianity. Okay. Yeah. 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 Find out. Hey, kids, color me a rainbow. Color me a rainbow. No, this is the one where he said it looks like melted puppets. Yeah. Okay. It looked, uh, it looked like they were left in a hot car for too long. Right. Yes. <laughs> is what they looked like. Yeah. They're found in the dumpster behind Jim Henson's uh, puppet workshop. That's kind of right. what these were like. Okay. Last, uh, we let's do two more. And then, I mean, I could do this all day, but let's do two more. <laughs> this is a tough game. Give me a rainbow. Oh, it's the end of that again. Linda King, you've done it again. Religious or Canadian? I'm saying Canadian. It looked like a nice Canadian family. And I don't think that the religious thing, when he shoved the little girl over, I don't think the religious would want to do that. I think Canadians are perfectly cool with that. Okay, George? Yeah, I'm going to go with Canadian, but I that the thing about being loved all the time sounds kind of godish. <laughs> Brennan, do you know? I, I don't know. I'm going to go Canadian. Just a nice open park. I, I think that's Canadian. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. 
Don't you know what we are? Well, I tell you, we are precious in, precious in his sight. We are precious in his sight. His is capitalized, and when it's our heart is young, like a child, we come, we are precious in his sight. Yeah, that arrived this at the is, office last week, actually. Is, <laughs> it, is that David Leave a Heart? Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Like David Leave a Heart. All right. This is the last one. I think uh well, yeah, we'll see. Who's how winning you right now? Who's winning so far, Nick? Brennan. What? I don't know. Oh. Uh let us know at home. I, I thought I was. Let us know in the comments. Okay. Let's just yeah, say everybody's keeping track. Okay. All right. Great. When I knock the door, can you shout and everybody at home shout and everybody in the studio shout? Come on out, bimbo, please. Okay, ready? Go! Come on, Bimbo, please. Bimbo, please. Well done, and out comes Bimbo, and here's Bimbo with Introducing Bimbo, the birthday clown, and the son of Happy. Here he goes. Bimbo, 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 I mean, no wonder there's so many fucked up people in the world is because look at all this children's programming from back in the <laughs> 70s and 80s. And no wonder there are so many like weirdos out there. It's because of this stuff. Having said that, he had a British accent. Uh, I, I don't think they have British accents in Canada. So I'm going to go with uh, religious based on that clue alone. OK, George, I'm going Canadian. Brennan? Uncle Bobby, it's Canadian. You are right. <laughs> CFTO TV, Box 9, Toronto, Ontario, N4A, 2M9. And that is how you play. Oh, wait, there's, there's one more. Do you want to do one more? I just couldn't stop myself. Uh, uh, yeah, let's keep them coming. All yeah. right, this is the last one. Sorry, I, thought, I forgot I put this one in here. I've got something for you for being such a great watchdog. Bye now. Be a good doggy. Dog biscuits. I would have rather had pizza. Pepperoni with double cheese. Now that would be a real treat. Religious or Canadian? There's absolutely zero clues to work with mm -hmm. here. Um, so the last one was what? Canadian? I'm going religious on this one. I don't think you do can, two Canadians in a row. I think I saw a palm tree, which would make this religious. Okay, <laughs> Brennan? Yeah, this doesn't look like Canada. Okay, let's look. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. <laughs> yeah, three for three. Yes, we all went out on top. That also arrived last week. And that is how you play religious or... Canadian. All right. Good maybe that's, game. Maybe that's its own spinoff show. I don't know. I mean, we, we could keep going. Let's do it. The raccoons always seem to uh, learn a lesson. I mean, that was the name of their VHS tape, but I, I couldn't help but wonder if there's any other lesson to be learned from today's show. Oh, I think there's a lesson for us here. Americans have long taken Canada for granted. And what was once dismissed as the tundra we'd flee to following a nuclear exchange with the Soviet Union has become the tundra we'll flee to following the impending global climate catastrophe. But Canada is more than just the country described to reporters as a quiet neighbor that kept to itself, the last country you'd expect this from. In fact, it's more like a nation designed on a weak dose of shrooms with fantastical objects like $2 coins, extra U's sprinkled haphazardly throughout words, healthcare without personal bankruptcy, and bizarre desserts that sound more like entries in urban dictionary, like taffy in the snow. Canada is not a mirror of who we are, it's a projection of who we could be. If only we could forgive them for bare naked ladies. But we never will, and we never should. And that's why I always say, the more you battle is twice the knowing. 100% agree. Couldn't I agree. agree with you more. Couldn't agree with you more. And it's been a great episode of Saturday Morning Cartoons. Did you get the bare naked ladies reference there? Brennan did. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, nobody I didn't else. Get it. Did. Yeah, I, I, I haven't. Heard, I think I've heard one song. Yeah, that was okay, enough it, for me. It was probably that one. Okay. Uh, Brennan, thank you for joining us. Uh, CalgaryUndergroundFilm.org, and there's still films tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you, see you there, and then see you next year. For sure. I learned a lot about Canada. 
So did I. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll send you, for your payment, I'll send you an envelope full of Canadian Tire money. So I uh, have a lot actually so yeah i mean right, i could just get it from toby like i'm probably gonna be seeing him in a couple weeks if you know in a middle minute <laughs> <laughs> that's true okay. all right happy shattered everybody enjoy your day happy shattered